uh, 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 yeah, rolling. Morning. Welcome back to Backyard Builds. Today I'm working on the Land Cruiser. Need to tray. Simple as that. Got my table set up over there. And uh, that's it. Let's get to it. So a little bit of insight before we start. You need to spend the time to either have it drawn up by someone or spend the time to really sit down and work it out yourself. There's a couple of free CAD programs out there. Very basic to use. I like to use Solid Edge and a program called Onshape. Uh, both available free. Sit down and work with them. If you can't do it, find someone who can. Simple as that. So what I've done is I've actually done a cut list, which is this here. And um, as you can see, I've written lengths and I've drawn my shape and my angles. So, you know, 1700 with 14 degree cuts on both ends, 38 degree both ends. Then there's some 42, you know, other sizes. And there's some tricky ones, which are 35 one way and a 10 degree cut on the 65 another way. Um, I've obviously used my bandsaw to cut everything. Um, that's just how I use, how I work. Um, if you don't have access to a bandsaw, don't worry. You can do this stuff with a grinder and a bit of know-how. I've already cut all my pieces, so let's put them together. So I've just cut some end caps here. These are out of some 3mm steel, cut in the guillotine. And these are going to cap the tube like that. So I'm going to weld them on, sand it all up. I'm going to do these bits first because they're the two long sides on either side of the tray. So let's do that. Tig is on. Tig can be hot. That hot, I think. And I'm going to use stainless filler wire for this. The reason for using stainless is I don't want any point of rust. So it will rust out from the inside, but it won't happen in my lifetime. So I'm just going to weld these up with some stainless filler rod. This is 1.6 mil 316 rod. Standard red laminated tungsten. Nothing else to it. Let's weld those up and I'll then sand them up. So, instead of holding my end cap by hand and getting burnt, I've clamped the spare one there with a clamp. Set it on there, perfect alignment every time. Just hold it with a finger or you can put something against it and that'll hold your end cap in place. Very simple. So put one tack there, rolled it over, another tack there. I did just have to push it in a little bit that's got that end cap on. So now you can take the clamp off, you can tack opposite two corners and weld it up. Pretty quick and easy. So as you'll see guys, there's no trickery of the camera. I'm doing all the welding. for that one. One thing I should tell you guys is the reason I'm welding off the tube onto the end cap is the tube is thinner material than the end cap is made of. So it's going to have a lower melting temperature than that. But what I can do is I can actually angle my torch and I can blow the material from this into that end cap and just add my filler wire as I go.
Uh, just got to repeat that four times now. So it might be a bit hard to see on the camera, but this end cap hasn't pulled in as much as I'd like. So all I'm doing, just smack them where that weld is, because that TIG weld will shrink up. I'll be able to compact it, essentially. I can get that end cap nice and tight. Just a quick little trick if your caps peel off a bit. So, sanded them up with a 36 grit. Probably a bit heavy, but it's all I've got. And then gave them a quick orbital with a 120 grit. Just got the edges nice and clean and smooth. The only reason I've finished these off now is because once the cross beam goes in, I can't get in there to properly clean and sand at all. So I do think ahead guys, like clean up stuff that you can do now instead of trying to do it later and it stuffs you up. So now I've got a couple of spaces here. I've already got that piece clamped. I'm just gonna sit the spaces in there to set my width and then I can just shuffle them back and forth and get my diagonals sweep and then I'll actually clamp in back and the front bits of tube. See that funky little line there? That's the seam of the tube. So on every piece that's going into this tray I've considered where the seam is. So that seam is currently on the bottom. This tray's actually got to flip over. What I've gone and done is clamp some angles, got it all lined up nicely. I'm only going to tack the corners on all four sides and then going to play with the diagonal and get it square and get it clamped down nice and tight so it doesn't move. So let's do that and I'll show you the next step. So I've got the front and the back rails tacked in and you can see I've got it all clamped. These four clamps don't come off until everything is tacked in and three quarters of it is welded up because they're going to hold this whole thing square. And the way I check square is you can use a two foot, but I don't find it very accurate. It's good for a quick measurement. So I'll go that corner over there to this corner over here. My measurement is 31, 40 and a half. And it's exactly the same the other way. So I'm now happy with that. Knowing that it's perfectly square. I'm now going to go through. Tack top and bottom. Top and bottom. On all four corners. And that will hold it in nice. Then I'm going to grab all the mid rails. And we'll mark them all out. We'll set all them in. Tack all them in. And move on to welding it. So I have... All my mid rails bar one in because it falls on the bench. I just don't want to tack it in, in case the height sets wrong. I'm going to leave that one out for the meantime. I'm now ready to weld up my frame. I'm going to weld there, there, and then same spot on that corner, same spot on that corner. And then I'm going to come back through and do all these. And I do it in what's called sequence welding or process welding. This is going to help the whole thing stay square and true. It's currently still square, I've just checked it. So now I'm gonna weld all these up so we can get that last brace in. I'm actually also, once I've welded all the corners up, I'm gonna go back through, weld the braces in, or the runners, whatever you wanna call them. And then I'll flip it over and finish welding it out and give it a quick sand, tidy it up. So that's the frame, mostly welded up, three quarters at least, three out of four. Now I've got my trolley over there, I drop it over there, over there, flip it over, roll it back, plonk, back on the bench, or maybe on the trestles. Wait and see how I feel. So yeah, I have checked it for square, it's pulled about a mil out, so it's like 31.40 and 31.42. 
but I'm not concerned about that. One mil is nothing over this kind of distance. So that is the tail light boards or tail light frames tacked on. I actually just tacked these four pieces together only on the outside corners on the flat, flat surface because I knew it would sort of have to open up a little bit. Same on the other side. I then cut a couple of extra pieces so I had something to attach them to. Use the same system, a couple of angles, clamp them underneath, tack those in, then I clamped the angles to the side, to the side, clamped it all in, checked it's all still square, and yeah. So that's the tail light boards. And they are canted 10 degrees facing down. Because this tray is going to sit up so high, it'll be right in your eye line of a standard car, so I thought I'd be a little bit courteous and just point them down a little bit. Next up is headboard. And now I've got to somehow get it on the back of that and make some mounts for it. So I just had to wait for the rain to stop, but I didn't let that stop me. So what I've done is I've got all the parts for the headboard out and I'm using the tray as my flat surface. And you can see I've just put two tacks on all the outside corners. I actually have a piece of tube that goes in between here. So what I'm going to do is grab it from over there, give it a quick sand prep. And because I've only tacked all the outside corners, should be able to just push it in gently and it should take shape. I can then just lightly tack it in. I can then stand the headboard up in its position. And I'll show you how I'm going to get it all squared up. So I now have... So I now have that lower piece just clamped in. I've measured from the point of this to the other side of that. I've got 393 on both sides, which is good. I'm now only going to tack it in these corners, on top and bottom. This will just give me the little bit of play I need in the leg when we also want to stand it all up for the actual headboard. So I'm just going to tack that. interesting point where the bench gets all tippy. I might have to put this down onto trestles now because it's just at the point where it's going to get really awkward really fast. I think I might do that. Alright so the headboard is clamped on. Same thing, angles. Using a straight edge here. Now this is going to pull out a square. So I've set it up so it's just a little bit that way. And you just see the light in the gap there. What I'm going to do now is probably put my tack on this piece and then in that corner and I'll be able to watch this tweak back over because it'll actually pull itself as the world contracts and it'll shrink again. So I'm going to tack this side and then I'm going to go to the other side, square it up we should be all happy days. So there we go. Light boards welded on. Down there. Headboards all welded up. And square. Probably where I'm going to leave it for today, guys. It's getting a bit late. Next will be I need to make all the I need to make like a chassis brace, a chassis rail essentially, so I can then mount to the car so that'll be next episode but thanks for watching code word today is tray make sure you comment like subscribe hit the notifications etc if there is any tips you want to learn or if there's any information you want on the fabrication of this tray feel free to 
comment down below and uh, we'll try and get to that. Uh, but that's it for now. So thanks for watching Backyard Builds and we'll see you next week.